Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday School. Today, we are talking about more stories of Jesus. We're getting into some of the, last week, I guess we started, some of the Holy Week stories. So, uh, remember last week's lesson was on Jesus teaching the disciples um, to remember him when they took communion, or when they were doing it, it was the Passover. And that's what we celebrate on Maundy Thursday of Holy Week. And then today we are talking about Jesus praying in the garden. And that happened right after uh, the Last Supper, which was last week's lesson. So I have our Bible story book here and we can read our scripture from the book of Luke. Okay, before we read our story, let's see the pictures. So we have over here, this is Jesus and he's sad. I wonder why he's sad. And then I wonder what this is, this shape, this figure. Let's see. That'll probably, our story will probably tell us what that is. And then this looks like maybe all the disciples and what does it look like they're doing? It looks like they might be asleep, doesn't it? Let's read our Bible story and figure out what this is all about. So, this is from the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 39 through 46. After the meal, Jesus and his followers walked to a garden on the Mount of Olives to pray. Jesus prayed, Father, please take away my pain if you can. If you can't, I will do what you want. An angel appeared to Jesus to give him strength and courage to face what was coming. Jesus prayed even harder to God. When he was finished praying, he went back to his followers. They were asleep and Jesus was very sad. Jesus asked, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray. So the disciples were asleep and this was... The angel that appeared to Jesus to give him strength when he was really sad and praying. So you may have heard this story before. It's one that we tell a lot every year um, during Holy Week on Monday, Thursday or Good Friday. You might have heard this before, but Jesus goes to the garden to pray after the Passover, after the Last Supper. And he tells his disciples to stay awake and pray with him. And the disciples end up falling asleep. We'll touch on that later. Um, but Jesus is really sad and afraid because he knows that soon people are going to be coming to arrest him. And he's probably going to die on a cross. And he's very sad and scared about that. Understandably, right? Jesus was human, just like us. That's very scary and sad. So he was praying to God um, to help him with his emotions. This story is really significant because it shows us that Jesus can be sad and Jesus can be scared. And that means that it's okay for us to be sad and scared. Um, God understands that we are sad and scared sometimes. And Jesus shows us that when we're sad and scared, we can talk to God. And God will listen and understand. And even if, you know, sometimes sad things happen and God can't make it not happen or take away our pain, sometimes we're just going to be sad about things. But, and that happened to Jesus too, Um Jesus said, take this pain away if you can, but if you can't, I'll do what I have to do. And sometimes we just have to be sad. Like when a loved one dies, there's nothing we can do about it, and we just have to be sad. And uh, Jesus shows us that it's okay to be sad, and it's okay to talk to God about how we feel. God understands. So our wonder question this week is... Uh, from our Bible story. And it says, I wonder, why do you think the followers, Jesus' disciples, were sleeping? Remember? They were sleeping in the garden after Jesus asked them to pray. Why do you think they were sleeping? 
might be something interesting to uh, either think for a moment to yourself or you can talk about it with uh, people you live with. Talk about why the disciples were sleeping. So today, instead of a craft, we have a prayer practice to do because our lesson was on Jesus praying in the garden. So today's all about prayer. And we have what is called a prayer labyrinth, a finger prayer labyrinth that we can do. So this is a labyrinth is just a path that is sometimes kind of windy and we can use it to help us pray. It's kind of a prayer practice tool. And they're very neat and I'm going to tell you about them. So um, I have uh, posted this picture if y'all want to print it out or if you just want to like move your finger along while we pray you can do that too. Um, but the labyrinth is just used to help us focus on the prayer that we're praying or help us listen to God while we uh, pray silently. Um, it's just something to help us focus. Sometimes when you're praying and maybe in your room by yourself, do you have trouble paying attention? Like your mind is wandering to other things. Um, that's kind of what the labyrinths are for. They help us focus on what either we want to say to God or we need to say to God or on what God is trying to say to us. Do you know that God oftentimes has a lot to say to us if we take some time to listen? Okay, let's uh, look at our prayer labyrinth and I'll show you kind of an example of something you can pray and how you can use it. So here's our prayer labyrinth and over here it says, trace the path to the heart of the labyrinth, the center. And in this case, it is an actual heart. And reflect on what God might be saying. So I have a prayer from today's lesson that I can pray for us and you can either follow along with your finger or if you've printed this picture out, you can follow along that way um, or you can just watch as I do the prayer labyrinth and you can um, think about the words that I'm praying as I say them, okay? So today's lesson was about Jesus and his emotions and how he was scared and sad and he took his emotions to God because he knew he could talk to God about it. So that's what our prayer is going to be about too. It's about when we have, when we're um, sad about something. So let's start our prayer. When I feel sad or scared or lost or confused or worried, I can share my emotions with God. When I'm feeling sad or lost or scared or confused or worried, I know God will make me strong. Amen. And then if you want, you can trace it all the way back out and say the words again. So let's do that. When I feel sad or worried or lost or scared or confused, I can share what I'm feeling with God. And when I'm feeling sad or scared or lost or confused or worried, I know God will make me strong. Amen. What did you think about that? Have you ever done a prayer labyrinth before? A finger labyrinth, maybe? Did you know we have a big labyrinth in front of the Disciple Center in the, in the yard? It's just made out of bricks and grass, and you can walk it with your entire body and pray your prayers that way. You can walk to the center of our big labyrinth while you pray, and then you can walk back out. And we've been actually doing a lot of that during this Lent, this uh, season before Easter, with our Lenten prayer project. I don't know if you've been keeping up with that or your parents have maybe, but every Thursday or every Friday and Saturday, 
of Lent, you're invited to come and we have little cards with prayers. You can pray on them and you can walk the labyrinth. So that might be something that you want to do this week, maybe with some people who live with you or something. Uh, maybe they can bring you to the labyrinth and y'all can either walk together or one by one and take some time to pray together. So uh, the big thing to remember about today's lesson is that God gave us our emotions and so God is not afraid of our emotions or afraid to hear about when we're sad or mad or stressed or anything, um, God knows this is going to happen to us and God wants to hear when we feel these things. And um, like our prayer said, God can help give us strength just like God gave Jesus strength when Jesus was sad and scared. Jesus was a human just like us and Jesus was our example. And so we know that we can take to God any of our emotions or situations that we're sad about or scared about or whatever. And God will hear us and God will help make us strong and give us strength. That's encouraging, isn't it? It's encouraging to me. I like hearing that God is there for me. Well, I have an exciting update for you. Can you guess what it's about? It is about our caterpillar friends. Can you see them? Look how big they are. Do you remember when I showed you them last week and they were just like little specks? Now, look how big these guys are. They are huge. I don't even believe it. And uh, possibly this week, I bet actually, is when they are going to start hanging from the cup ceiling, the lid of the cup and getting in their cocoons. You can see some of them are already up there and I think they might be getting ready to get into their cocoons so they can transform into butterflies and be ready for Easter. Isn't that amazing? Creation is amazing, nature is amazing, God is amazing for making all this cool stuff. Caterpillars are awesome. So follow along with our caterpillars this week online and I'll be posting when they go in their cocoons and then we'll just wait on them to become butterflies. And we know every year when our caterpillars are getting ready to become butterflies that it's almost time for Easter and it is. Uh, this coming week is the last week before Holy Week. So next week is Palm Sunday and we have some uh, fun worship that day. I think a lot of you might be involved in that service. Mm -hmm. Exciting. And then Palm Sunday is the start of Holy Week. So we'll have Maundy Thursday um, and Good Friday and then Easter. Easter is just in two short weeks. Very exciting. Um, we'll be talking about some Holy Week stuff next week too. So be sure to come back for that. And on Palm Sunday next, Sunday afternoon, we also have our Easter egg hunt. It's in the yard of the DC, the Disciple Center. It's across the building from the church where the labyrinth is. So uh, come to that. That'll be fun. It's from 4 to 5 next Sunday. So we hope to see you there. Okay, well, that's all for today. I Love you all so much. I know I say that every week, so I hope you know that by now, but I'm going to keep saying it because it's true, and it's good to hear that you're loved. So I love you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next week for our Palm Sunday Sunday School, okay? I'll see you next week. Bye!